what is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing is used to determine whether there is enough evidence in a sample of data to infer that a certain condition is true for the entire population. Therefore, it is a method to test an assumption or theory about a parameter of a population based on a sample. What is the population and what is the sample? The population is the whole group we are interested in. If you want to study the average height of all adults in the United States, then the population would be all adults in the United States. The sample is a smaller group we actually study, chosen from the population. For example, 150 adults were selected from the United States. And now we want to use the sample to make a statement about the population. And here are the six steps how to do that. Number one, hypothesis. First, we need a statement, a hypothesis, that we want to test. For example, we want to know whether a drug will have a positive effect on blood pressure in people with high blood pressure. But what's next? In our hypothesis, we stated that we would like to study people with high blood pressure. So our population is all people with high blood pressure in, for example, the US. Obviously, we cannot collect data from the whole population. So we take a sample from the population. Now we use this sample to make a statement about the population. But how do we do that? For this we need a hypothesis test. Hypothesis testing is a method for testing a claim about a parameter in a population using data measured in a sample. Great, that's exactly what we need. There are many different hypothesis tests. And at the end of this video I will give you a guide on how to find the right test. And of course you can find videos about many more hypothesis tests on our channel. But how does a hypothesis test work? When we conduct a hypothesis test, we start with the research hypothesis, also called alternative hypothesis. This is the hypothesis we are trying to find evidence for. In our case, the research hypothesis is, the drug has an effect on blood pressure. But we cannot test this hypothesis directly with a classical hypothesis test. So we test the opposite hypothesis, that the drug has no effect on blood pressure. But what does that mean? First we assume that the drug has no effect in the population. We therefore assume that in general people who take the drug and people who don't take the drug have the same blood pressure on average. If we now take a random sample and it turns out that the drug has a large effect in the sample, then we can ask how likely it is to draw such a sample, or one that deviates even more, if the drug actually has no effect. So in reality, on average, there is no difference in the population. If this probability is very low, we can ask ourselves, maybe the drug has an effect in the population, and we may have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the drug has no effect. And it is this probability that is called the p-value. Let's summarize this in three simple steps. Number one, the null hypothesis states that there is no difference in the population. Number two, the hypothesis test calculates how much the sample deviates from the null hypothesis. Number three, the p-value indicates the probability of getting a sample that deviates as much as our sample or one that even deviates more than our sample, assuming the null hypothesis is true. But at what point is the p-value small enough for us to reject the null hypothesis? This brings us to the next point, statistical significance. If the p-value is less than a predetermined threshold, the result is considered statistically significant. This means that the result is unlikely to have occurred by chance alone and that we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. This threshold is often 0.05. Therefore, a small p-value suggests that the observed data, or sample, is inconsistent with the null hypothesis. This leads us to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. A large p-value suggests that the observed data is consistent with the null hypothesis and we will not reject it. But note, there is always a risk of making an error. A small p-value does not prove that the alternative hypothesis is true. 
it is only saying that it is unlikely to get such a result or a more extreme when the null hypothesis is true. And again, if the null hypothesis is true, there is no difference in the population. And the other way around, a large p-value does not prove that the null hypothesis is true. It is only saying that it is likely to get such a result or a more extreme when the null hypothesis is true. So there are two types of errors which are called type 1 and type 2 error. Let's start with the type 1 error. In hypothesis testing, a type 1 error occurs when a true null hypothesis is rejected. So in reality, the null hypothesis is true, but we make the decision to reject the null hypothesis. In our example, it means that the drug actually had no effect, so in reality there is no difference in blood pressure whether the drug is taken or not, the blood pressure remains the same in both cases. But our sample happened to be so far off the true value that we mistakenly thought the drug was working. And a type 2 error occurs when a false null hypothesis is not rejected. So in reality the null hypothesis is false, but we make the decision not to reject the null hypothesis. In our example this means the drug actually did work, there is a difference between those who have taken the drug and those who have not, but it was just a coincidence that the sample taken did not show much difference. And we mistakenly thought the drug was not working. And now I'll show you how DataDEP helps you to find a suitable hypothesis test and of course calculates it and interprets the results for you. Let's go to datadep.net and copy your own data in here. We will just use this example dataset. After copying your data into the table, the variables appear down here. DataTab automatically tries to determine the correct level of measurement but you can also change it up here. Now we just click on hypothesis testing and select the variables we want to use for the calculation of a hypothesis test. DataTab will then suggest a suitable test. For example in this case a chi-square test or in that case an analysis of variance. Then you will see the hypotheses and the results. If you're not sure how to interpret the results, click on Summary in Words. Further, you can check the assumptions and decide whether you want to calculate a parametric or a non-parametric test. You can find out the difference between parametric and non-parametric tests in my next video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.